I take everything back about what I said, anything bad about the dress. Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. We are The Movie Couple. I'm Wendy. I'm Dustin. And we're here to give you our review of Beauty and the Beast. Tale as old as time. So let's go ahead and start this review with our expectations going into this movie. I really tried to keep my expectations as low as possible when I go into a movie. Mm -hmm. I, there's been too many times where I've just been so excited that it just ruins the movie, even if it's a good movie. So I've been trying really hard to be like, okay, this is what I've seen in the trailers. Now I want to go in and experience the movie on its own. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, so I tried to curb my enthusiasm for this movie, but I was kind of excited. I was all kinds of excited when they announced the movie Beauty and the Beast, Emma Watson, gimme, gimme, gimme. And then they brought out the very first teaser trailer. There was no humans in it. It was just like the scenery of the castle, the ballroom. They had the prologue mm -hmm. music. Uh, and I just about teared up when, <laughs> when, I, when that first music, uh, the music first kicked in. And then more trailers came out. Then I started wavering. My confidence in this movie started to waver a little bit. Then I didn't like the dress. Then I didn't like how the servants looked. Mm -hmm. And then I wasn't sure about da-da-da-da-da. So there was a lot of uncertainties for me going into this movie. But as a childhood favorite, and I just really wanted uh, this movie to do well. So I walked in with hope, but I was also prepared <laughs> for it to be not as perfect as I thought the animation was. So it looked like you actually had a lot of trepidation, so to speak, <laughs> with going into this movie. Yes. What are some of the things that you actually really liked about the movie? The standout for me, the characters Gaston and LeFou mm -hmm. were like the MVP of the movie, specifically Josh Gad, LeFou. They oh made an, an announcement. Uh, they came out and said it. Actually, I think it was yesterday um, that LeFou is gay in the movie. And at first I was like, whoa. Why would you do that? Why, why, would, you, why yeah. would you need to announce that right before the movie? Let people see it for themselves. I don't care if the character is gay or not. And then I started yeah. thinking about it. I went back to think about the, the, you know, the animated feature and I was like, well, it kind of makes sense. Yeah. Okay, but why it doesn't kind of have change. Like a man crush. Yeah, it doesn't change anything about LeFou for me. It doesn't change anything about the movie for it. Uh, the movie for me, like I didn't want to see it more or less because of the news. What I thought was that that piece of news took away from everybody's attention instead of everybody focus on overall the movie, the remake of Beauty and the Beast. They're gonna be seeing. We're gonna look for LeFou's little little quirks or whatever his personalities and these traits that the director came out and said, that's what I was worried about, like it was going to be distracting. Yeah. For me, I can safely say that it, it, I didn't find it distracting. I thought it was natural. It flowed. So don't worry about it if, if, you, think, if you think that's going to be a bit, big distraction in the film. It wasn't that. I loved those two characters. I actually, okay, here it is. Hater's Corner, right? Wendy Lee and Ashley Mova did not like the dress when we first saw the dress. Wendy Lee... And Ashley Mova did not like how any of the servants looked. I'm going to take all those back. <laughs> I take everything back about what I said, anything bad about the dress. The dress was beautiful. Some of my favorite scenes, the ballroom scene. Mm -hmm. I actually was looking over at Wendy and I started to see her go... <laughs> Waterworks. Like, oh, she was I mean, crying. the song hadn't even started. She hadn't even started singing. And it was... Da, 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 and I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> and that's it. Um, the mob song, the Kill the Beast song, mm -hmm. was my second favorite. And, of course, the big number, uh, Be Our Guest. I, I really... though Those were the three standout numbers for me. And, of course, the set design and the costumes oh, I really liked as well. The way the movie looked was incredible. Um, it was a little weird to get used to at first because it really did kind of feel like they just brought Disneyland the park <laughs> into the movie okay, and then yeah. made it kind of a... So it had that kind of... What, like a theme park feel? Yeah, I guess it could kind very, of like very, a theme very, park a, feel. Very much a sound stage the, slash set. the coloring of it was, you know, very stylized. And it was funny because... It was quite vibrant. You, you just listed off all of your favorite songs. My favorite song was Gaston. Oh, that was... Oh, that man, was, yes. I have to add that one to my that list one, on the back I, end. I mean, all yes. of these songs were done very well, and they're all tweaked just a little bit 
to change them from the originals. But yeah, the thing that really carries this are the characters, are the fact that you just have this feeling of being able to hang out with yes. friends that you haven't gotten to hang out with in a long Aww. time. And you have this great sentimental value attached to all of these moments, but yet they're changed just a little bit to make you feel like it's brand new. And I just loved being able to kind of experience this again for the first time because they did they changed just enough to keep you kind of interested and keep going, but they kept just enough the same to give you the ah uh, moments. I love that you brought that up because as I was watching the movie, I knew that it was obviously a remake of the original. But how much of it was they were going to take from the original picture for picture, shot for shot, and put it in the movie? I will say there are some that satisfy your mm -hmm. nostalgia feels, but not enough for you to be like, okay, copycat, well, what's the point of this movie? You just, you're just going to um, copy it shot for shot and picture for picture. So it is so safe to say that it paid tribute to the original, but it also yeah. is its own Beauty and the Beast. Now, that's actually something that... I would have to also say was kind of a minus for me, something that bothered me throughout the entire movie. My analogy that I was using when I was kind of like talking to the people when we got out was imagine that you've read the book, Beauty and the Beast, and then you go see the movie of that book. Mm -hmm. All the times, like especially when I watch like the Harry Potter films or the Lord of the Rings films, there's always these moments that I was expecting it for it to look and feel and sound exactly like this. But they changed it. So that throws you off. Going into this movie, I highly recommend that you leave that at the door because having these expectations of, well, I want to I want to see it done like this again, mm -hmm. or I want to see it done like that. They really should have done it like this. Leave that at the door because the way they do it, they really do a good job on bringing, making the original animated movie into a live action world. Not just making it live action, because if you want to see that, go see, a, go see the musical. Yeah, either go see the musical or just pop in your DVD. <laughs> yeah, so they brought it into a world that had a little bit more tangibility. Mm -hmm. There was never once when I was watching the numbers where I thought, you know, I know those songs by heart. Mm -hmm. But there was never a point where I was like, ah, it's not right. Never at a point I said that. I welcomed all the changes that they made um, to all the songs. Of course, there were, there were, you know, cue, musical cues you were listening for that's mm -hmm. in the original that may not be in the uh, in, in this movie. And I missed it, but I wasn't like, this song now sucks because they didn't put this one note in it. How dare they? Uh, not at all. Yeah, for me, it was um, a lot more for the lines, too. Because there were some lines that I was waiting for them to say or for them to, you know, for the um, scene to go in a certain direction. And it doesn't it kind of they kind of take some things out of order also of um of, of the, the anim timeline. of the timeline of the animated movie yeah but it still works so really try to pull yourself away from the timeline head? that you expected and the lines you expected and the lyrics you expected and allow yourself to feel it anew set yourself free and enjoy this movie <laughs> um i want to talk about the servants a little bit because i was so gun ho about not i was just not into how they look specifically um uh, mrs potts and chip yeah i really did, did not, not like, like when faces. i saw those photos in our i think it was trailer reaction i said at the time i didn't like them but they're in the movie i may change my mind well, here, here it is. <laughs> I'm changing my mind about every single one of them because, God, I, I talk so much shit about every single one of those characters yeah, because did. they're beloved to me. Um, and Especially I just like want Mrs. them to Potts. be good. Yeah, I just like her painted face, you know, in the picture, it was kind of, I was kind of shocked. I was like, oh, that's what they're going for. But the first time all of these creatures or objects appeared on the screen, I went, oh. And I immediately took a liking to them. It worked in the setting and I am so glad I am eating my words I am so glad that all of these work yeah. because I, I can't I don't know how many times I can say this I love the original so much that I think it would I would have been really upset if I just walked out and be like oh these objects sucked mm -hmm. um, same thing with the dress the photos that they had 
I remember when I first saw it, I was like, okay, it's too modern. There's not enough embellishment. Well, you know what? They didn't show their trump card because there is some, there's so much more to that dress than what the production photos in the trailer showed. And I'm glad that they held it because when it was revealed, I went, okay, the essence of the original bell dress and the animation is in that dress. And it's not just the color. There's so much more to it. And I... And I loved that. And that's why I cried in the ballroom scene. I When I saw her, they pull back the camera and they reveal the dress, I was like, <gasps> it was almost as good, almost as good as the Cinderella reveal. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Cinderella's dress was at like a 10 for me. Belle's is at a 9.5. What you were talking about with the characters, um, what your fear was is that they looked a little too cartoonish. Some of the CGI... I mean, especially when the beast has his song yeah. and you try to see his mouth trying to do like the musical numbers mm-hmm. and it's really just <laughs> yeah. singing the song and it looked a little animatronic yeah. it looked a little that they didn't it looked a little cartoony yeah well now that we're on to our our um things that we didn't like about the movie that was definitely one of the biggest things that stood out to me for this film was the CGI for the Beast. We kept and on saying, some of the characters. we kept on saying, okay, it's gonna look all right when it's on the big screen. It's gonna look all right when it's in motion. Blah 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 blah. Um, I hate saying that it didn't work. The Beast didn't work a lot of the times. Like yeah. I, you know, and and if there's anything I need to pick apart for this movie, is the Beast and the CGI. And you got to think, it can't be easy. To do trying the, oh to have God. a human in these shots and trying to do everything CG and have everything render that good. Um, but at the same time, with the technology that they have for the Jungle Book, don't yeah. you think that they will be able to do the Beast much better? I think so. So I don't know where the disconnect between like well, that technology and the, how why they didn't use it for Beauty and the Beast. I don't know why, but all I know is what I saw and, and the Beast looked unfinished. And cartoony at times. Yeah, well, so also some of the characters in their um, object forms mm-hmm. seemed really cartoony. And I was wondering if that was kind of done on purpose mm-hmm. because they still wanted to have that kind of animated feel to it, especially during Be Our Guest. Yeah. I thought it looked a little animated. There were, there were parts. And in mm-hmm. a lot of, yeah, a lot of the big number songs with the animated characters, everything looked kind of animated. CGI'd, so it, it didn't really pull me out of it. But you noticed it. But I noticed it, so not a not a big markdown, but still. Yeah, um, another thing that so this movie was I in the very beginning for, with starting with the prologue. If you've seen the the uh, original animation, you know how it starts with the prologue. Yeah, like them telling the story how he turned into the beast. There was something that they did when they started to tell the story of the prologue. They interrupted with, I can't even say it because I don't want to say the spoiler, with with the following scene. Yeah. It was so disconnected for me and I was like, what is going on? I felt like it interrupted the entire flow of the beginning of the movie. And right there and then I almost made up my mind, nope, I don't like it. I'm, I'm not for it at all. And honestly, this movie, it took me a while to get into it. It really yeah. took me, and I think it wasn't until after Gaston's song where I started to become comfortable and invested in this movie. I mean, by the time we hit the ballroom scene, I was like sold. I was like, take my money, take it again. <laughs> I didn't feel that it started strong. I also, yeah. um, in the it very l- first song, I'm sorry, I'm going to let you get to it just so I don't lose my train of thought. The song Bell. Mm-hmm. We start with, bonjour, bonjour, bonjour. And uh, Emma Watson starts her first line of singing. And I didn't hear this when they did the sneak peek for all the TV spots and all the clips that they released. But I heard it today in the theater. And I was like, am I hearing a slight bit of auto-tune for the first line? Like, and, 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 I, and I listened to it, throughout, I listened for it throughout the entire film. It was really prominent. I'm not saying she was auto-tuned. That's probably a bad word to use. So I'm going to nix that word. I'm going to say she sounded really produced okay. in that first song. Especially when, when Luke Evans' part came in, he didn't sound produced. When Josh Gad's part came in, he didn't sound produced. But when Emma sang, she sounded produced. Now that eventually went away throughout the movie, which I thought was good because she, she sang more than one song. But I, I was worried. I was like, 
Could she not pull it off? And that's why she sounded so produced. Yeah, I was kind of feeling like they were trying to rush the beginning a little bit. Oh. They were kind of like, okay, let's quickly get through this point. We want to get her in the castle and start going with the her and the beast mm-hmm. and get that chemistry going and kind of set up Gaston, set up her, set up the little town, set up the story, and just get them in there. Mm-hmm. And then that's when you started really falling in love with this. And you start falling more... I mean, you love Gaston from the beginning. He's, I think he's one of the greatest Disney villains to begin with. Yeah. And Luke Evans. Oh, my God, does an amazing job. Talk about the sounding chemist- a lot like the original. Oh, my... Yeah. Him and... He really Ra- surprised me. Him and Josh Gad. So, it's, there's just a lot of things that they're like... They nailed 100% perfectly on the head. We've been talking about this movie for quite a while now. I think it's time to wrap up our thoughts and give a score. Go ahead. So my score, um, there were a few things that I thought and marked it down. The slow pay, I mean, the the way that they kind of just went right in the beginning. (laughs) This was like, go, 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 go. And some of the um, the CGI um, and the way that I kind of had my expectations from the original animated movie. So I'm going to give this, but it's still a really fun movie to watch. I'm going to go for um, 8.5. Okay. Out of 10. So for me, this movie started kind of rocky. I had to really grow to love it. And in the end, I really did. I thought a lot of the songs worked. The modern ones, the new Mm -hmm. ones, all of it worked. The BCGI, it wasn't quite there. And that's that's pretty disappointing because it's such a fantastical feel. Um, I mean, talk about bringing a music musical to life on screen with full of color yeah. and great characters. But the Beast, it was you. You really noticed it in every single scene. Like I really couldn't just fall into it. But that's that's. I would say if there's any flaws, that's the biggest one. Everything else really worked for me. My score is. 8.5 out of oh, 10. Hey, hey. We don't talk about this before we shoot, so I didn't know what score he was going to get. Guys, well, that's it for our review. Go ahead and sound off in the comment section below your thoughts of the movie. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. We will see you in the next video.